Hopefully my audio is working today. In today's video, we're gonna go check out some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. Have you ever heard of third man syndrome? No. No. Okay, super, super weird. So third man syndrome has been explained by scientists of a kind of a weird phenomenon that happens with mountain climbers. So these people who are climbing on mountains who are on the edge of death or edge of just giving up have experienced very similar things at different times unrelated to each other where they see a person or a figure oh. that motivates them, encourages them, or gives them proper advice to continue moving forward. There are people like, my parents weren't mountain climbing, but this happened and it cannot be explained. <gasps> and then I found a story and it was this woman who had heard a voice in her head that said, go see a doctor about your brain. Go to this place. Ooh. It was a specific part of the London hospital that dealt with brain injuries and brain, just the brain. The voices told her that she had a tumor. They discovered a tumor. Oh my gosh. And they were able to remove it. And then she continued to leave. And then when she That's went wild. home, she heard the voice one more time for the rest of her life. And it said, we were glad to be of service. Ew, weird. I don't know. For me, I do not hear voices like that. That's very specific and very direct. I hear like an internal monologue of questions to myself, maybe even some sort of talking, but never a voice directly from someone else saying, hey, do this or hey, do that. Mine's always just some kind of internal bickering back and forth with itself. And if I heard a voice in my head that I knew it wasn't mine, it was someone that was directing me to do something, whether it was to help myself, like go to the hospital for whatever reason, and I went to the hospital and, and they found something that was important to find, then I would start really heavily questioning my faith. Then I would be like, okay, now I have angels following me. This is, this is a good sign. Oh, what do you guys think? Do you guys have any voices in your head that are not your own internal monologue, but you know that it's someone Someone else talking to you for whatever specific reason? If aliens are real, why don't they come down here and talk to us? Science calls this the Fermi paradox, which is the question of if there's so much life in the universe, why don't we see aliens all over the place? And why don't they come and walk amongst us? Mainstream science completely overlooks the possibility that extraterrestrials might be deeply spiritual beings with strong moral codes of conduct. The other thing that science overlooks is that there's only two polarities in the universe, which all sentient beings must choose between. That is the positive and the negative. The positive polarity sees all beings as one and therefore seeks to protect and preserve young civilizations such as ours. These are extremely enlightened beings, and so they're never going to violate our free will as that is seen by them as a highly negative act. So Earth is in what is called the acclimation phase, which is part of the protocol for positive extraterrestrials to initiate contact with other planetary civilizations. They understand that most humans on our planet are still afraid of the idea that extraterrestrials exist. And so so the reason that we see so much UFO activity in our atmosphere but don't have open contact yet is because these beings are trying to show us their goodwill and intentions for being here. However, we are not waiting on them, they are waiting on us. Humanity must reach a tipping point where there's more humans who want open contact than those who are afraid of it. Only then will extraterrestrials begin to contact humanity openly. I've heard of the Fermi paradox before and I tend to kind of believe this. If there is extraterrestrial out there, they kind of keep to themselves because we're just not ready for them or we're too aggressive and they're too kind because they probably have the technology to completely wipe us out if they really wanted to. But but I am sure that if they do exist, they have contacted us plenty of times, probably by certain individuals, because why would they make themselves known to a large group of individuals instead of just a few select people of power to talk to them about certain things and try to lead a direction? But I don't know if that's necessarily the case with aliens. I, I do think that they visit us, and I do think that they use resources of ours, but they tend to try and keep themselves out of our story. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you didn't know, it's free to do so, and I only ask once per video, and I make a video like this almost every day. And if you look at this graph here, you'll see that 25% of the viewers that watch my content are subscribed to the channel, while 74% of the viewers that watch my content are not subscribed but keep coming back for more of my content. So to the 25% that are subscribed, thank you so much. And to the 74% that are not subscribed, hey, I still appreciate you. Thank you for watching.
I can't believe I'm saying this, but you can now all go on the Titanic. Do we not learn? No, this is not going on the Ocean Gate or anything similar as that. In fact, it's not even going to the Titanic. This is just strange. So this Australian billionaire right here obviously loved the Titanic. Now, obviously, he's a little bit sad he didn't get to go on the first one, and he's got so much money that he thought, why not build another one? So, yep, the Titanic 2.0 is actually going to be built. Now, this Titanic 2 will be an exact replica of the first one, looking exactly the same, doing the same things, apart from hitting an iceberg, and will take people around the world in luxury and style, basically fitting out all the interior, all the exterior, exactly the same as the first one. And, I mean, to be honest, it's quite a good idea, because there probably would be quite a lot of people that would want to go on it for some reason. Now, there's actually been plans to build a Titanic 2.0 quite a few times. This is actually the third time it's been proposed, but this time it's looking, it's actually very likely that it will be built. Now, if it does get approved and go into production, it will start production in 2025, with an estimated release date of 2027. So, two years to build that flipping boat. Quite quick, isn't it? But it's estimated to cost between 500 million and 700 million dollars to actually build this boat and fit it out exactly like the original. Now yeah, if this thing was just sitting in one harbour and people could go on it and see what it was like, cool. Actually taking people the same route as the previous one did, I'm not too sure. Although it's going to be a lot more safer and a lot more advanced than before, obviously we have better technology and engineering now. So. Fingers crossed, it will be all good. But let me know in the comments down below if you'll be going on the Titanic 2.0. And as always, hit that follow button and I will keep you updated. Man, I really hope that if this gets built, it has no problems and it doesn't suffer the same fate as the original Titanic because that would be horrible. But like he said, we do have more up-to-date technology. We have a little bit better mapping of our waters. So it shouldn't be quite as dangerous. But that would be pretty scary to be on a cruise of the Titanic going over the same place that the original Titanic sank, that would be, that's kind of scary to me. Interesting nonetheless, I'm, I, I have a feeling this would be a huge hit for a lot of people. A customer removed the 18% gratuity that was automatically added to their restaurant bill. In a Reddit post, the customer posted a photo of the receipt that they received after dining at a restaurant. You'll notice here at the bottom it says that the 18% gratuity has been added and that the customer can either increase, decrease, or remove the gratuity. So this customer crossed out the gratuity and didn't pay it. People in the comments section were pretty split on the customer's refusal to tip, with some saying they shouldn't have to opt out of paying anything, while others argued that this person was wrong for taking away the tip entirely since it wasn't the server's fault this rule was instituted in the first place. It's just another back and forth argument in the name of tipping culture. According to Bankrate, roughly two in three U.S. adults have a negative view of tipping. 41% said they believe businesses should pay employees better rather than relying so much on tips, while 30% believe that tipping culture has gotten out of control. Yet people still do tip. Almost half of U.S. adults who dine at sit-down restaurants typically tip at least 20%. An etiquette expert, Elaine Swan, says that it's never justified to not leave a tip. Servers shouldn't suffer because restaurants currently don't pay them a livable wage. They don't enforce the rules and tips are a major part of their income. How do you feel about tipping in the United States? Has it gotten out of hand? This can be a very touchy subject for a lot of people. There's a lot of people that believe that you should pay your full gratuity. There's a lot of people that believe that you shouldn't be paying a tip at all and they refuse it. I really just fall in the middle. I pay the tip because that's kind of the culture, but I really wish that restaurant employees would stand their ground and demand that their company starts paying the full wage that they deserve. Restaurants make pretty good sums of money, especially if it's a really common restaurant. So leave a comment down below on your beliefs of this system because to me, it can be either or. I just really hope that one day, the people of the restaurant industry stand up to their employers and demand to be paid fair wages and not really rely on tips as much because it becomes a business standard that business owners think that they can get away with and really they should not. The first thing that I could see were a few personnel connections to the right in a large hangar, maybe twice, three times the size of the area that we're in now. There was a monolithic slab directly in front of me that was being held up by nothing. The closer that I got to this slab, I felt an intense vibration inside of my body. I never felt anything like that before in my life, never anything since, but it left no sound. The loudest thing in that room was the silence and the footfalls of the people in front of and behind me. As I got closer, my natural southern curiosity took over. Oh, my shoes are untied. So I go down just to take a peek. And there's absolutely nothing 
up underneath this monolithic slab that if I had to estimate would be well over 100 tons. Absolutely nothing holding it up. You can see by the picture, there's another boulder directly behind it. It was flat on the ground. There were two other people beside it. I could only see heels and feet. To the right, you could see what looked like a boulder. And all three of these that I could tell had this box on top that was black with spires that came off and I couldn't tell where it was connected, but it obviously had something to do with the levitation. The one to the right was being spun by the personnel that you could see in the picture. If this is a true story, I'm extremely curious as to what equipment was attached to that monolith because that could be the whole solution to anti-gravity. And I really would be curious to know, was it through vibration, magnetic force, what it was exactly? I would like to know if this is even a real story. This is the biggest realization I had when I left the U.S. We live in the fucking matrix here. If you feel like you've been indoctrinated to be a fucking slave, it's because it's true. If your gut is telling you that this is not what life is supposed to be, it's because it's true. I promise you, all you need to do is buy a fucking flight. Get the fuck out of the U.S. Don't move, right? Just fucking go on like a two-week trip just so you can open your fucking mind. Because the reality of it is, we've all been indoctrinated since kids. And a lot of you guys who have this spiritual awakening and you're seeing the matrix for what it is, that's a good start. But you do need to get out of the U.S., to really unlock the fucking cheat code. Because that confirmation when you step out of the US soil, when you're in another country, that confirmation of, oh my God, I am slaving my life away, slaps you in the fucking face. So I don't know who needs to hear this, but if you fucking hate your job, if you fucking hate your situation that you have here in the US, buy a fucking plane ticket. Fucking throw a dart at a map, and fucking pick a random country and fucking fly there. Because people like me fucking talking about it on TikTok is not good enough. It's not good enough. I personally do not have this gut reaction that this individual is talking about. My gut's not telling me that America is the matrix and that I need to escape it. I, I do like living in America. I do like, I've come very accustomed to the standards of America and it works for me in, in a way that I can work with it. Now, don't get me wrong. There's definitely some stuff here in America that's extremely annoying, but there is other countries for sure that are way worse than America. And there's some, there's some countries out there that are way better than America. But to say that it's a matrix I really think that applies to every country to an extent, depending on who you're talking to in that country. What do you guys think about this? Do you think that America is a matrix system or do you think most countries are a form of the matrix? Y'all take a look at this, y'all. This is in Mexico. Look at this, y'all. Look at that. Look at the sky, y'all. Have you ever seen this before? Now, I remember showing a video like this, and this was in uh, Florida, on the west coast of Florida. But look at this in Mexico, y'all. Doesn't that look? It, look, it looks like the looks like the ferment is falling down. It looks like the ferment is breaking. Hmm? It looks like the ferment is breaking. Look at all that, like spider webs, huh? Like honeycombs. What is going on here, y'all? Look at what the, it looks like another world, right? Like an alien world. What do you? I just find this so fascinating. So, what if that is the bottom of a mothership, y'all? What if that is the bottom of a mothership? Like, the mothership is a huge meteor, and that's what it is. That's crazy, huh? Oh my goodness, man. The world is getting a lot more interesting. Let's get it. So what do you guys think that is, man? To me, I think that's a huge mothership, and we're looking at the bottom of it, man, because that shit is eerie. It's crazy. I've never seen anything like this before. What y'all think it is? This video is strictly for entertainment purposes only. I'm only raising awareness to interesting situations during this interesting time. Honestly, that just looked like a bunch of really dense clouds, but I did see the circle formations that this individual is talking about, and it does kind of make me wonder if they're, because they were almost so perfect, what if those are just a bunch of little mini spaceships or UFOs, if you will, that are cloaked into the clouds and you just see the perfect imprint of them? I often wonder if UFOs travel through clouds and storms and or cause storms to travel without being seen. But this probably was just clouds.
this one kind of was tough for me to grasp was how how was he emulating no gravity that was clearly certain situations where he was able to move like those potatoes he was able to push each individual out of the way not as if it was just really fast and they just slow mode the video there's definitely some slow motion going on here but the physics that he was demonstrating were really good like i would like to know how this was done because impressive Ah, uh, no, don't do that. Hydrogen peroxide is gonna hurt like hell, but also it's like Rambo. Yeah, Rambo, like this guy, hydrogen peroxide comes in and shoots everything. Yes, it kills the bacteria, but also it kills the good cells. It kills the cells that help you heal. Yes, hydrogen peroxide is bad for healing. Stop putting it on wounds. I've heard this before so many times. I kind of disagree though. I'm not going to lie. I really enjoy peroxide. It does like when I'm when I'm working outside or anything and I cut myself and I've I've definitely done some damage onto myself. I always rinse it off with peroxide and peroxide does not sting at all alcohol stings but peroxide does not hurt whatsoever when it's inside the wound uh it, it i feel like my scars heal so much faster if i use peroxide over just standard washing it and rinsing it out what is your take on peroxide i like it but not everyone does I found the craziest Mandela effect, bro. Okay. This shit pissed me off so much. I'm actually concerned. Bet. So, backstory real quick. My dad, his favorite pop drink was what? Coca-Cola. And he would always have it on the table eating dinner or whatever. And I always yeah. look at it because, like, I'm bored or whatever. Yeah. Looking at the logo. Now, I'm going to show you a picture. Okay. Tell me which logo you remember. Which logo? The, the one with the dash, With the right? dash, right? Yeah, with the yeah. dash. For me, it's the squiggly dash. Huh? For me, it's the squiggly dash, right? <laughs> but the real one no, is know. this shit. What the fuck is this shit, bro? Yo, that's the real Coca-Cola logo. The dots? Yes. What the fuck? Is that I a... never remembered that. There's no way. <laughs> if it's like an apostrophe, you read it. Coca, and then there's a pause, which is the dash. Yes. Cola. Yes. But I, rem I remember with the squiggly line. Oh, I feel like shit. that just flows better. It looks right. But this? Like, what is this? <laughs> nah, nah. That doesn't make any sense what is that that's actually real like if we took out a coca-cola right now like we, we'll, we'll google to... we'll google coca-cola right now what? look 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 boom let me see, let me see. boom that doesn't look right bro there's no way i specifically know i've seen plenty of coca-cola and there is a dash there's no way that there was an apostrophe or whatever you want to call that thing there was none of that that's not real but i googled coca-cola and that's been their logo for a long time. So what? There was definitely a dash in between the words Coca and Cola, right? Now, would you believe both of those women are the same exact age? Not to the day, but really, really close. Yeah, no, you wouldn't. But they are. And we'll be fair. Both of those men are the same age. And ladies, how many of you want him to move into the community? <laughs> Just ask it. No, so this is uh, Ernestine Shepard, and she is the oldest living female bodybuilder that's still still competitive, or she was. Um, she is in her 80s. Yeah. Guess what? Most of us don't age like that. We have bodybuilders. We have fitness experts. We have all kinds of people that have heart attacks, and they die because genetics play a part, Okay. It's not just taking care of yourself. So maybe she took as good a care of herself all of her life as she did, but this is what we've got because she has maybe rheumatoid arthritis. Maybe she has some other disease. I don't know, okay? But we'll go back over here because the room's filled with ladies and, <laughs> and we'll let you guys glare for a while because he looks good and he's 84. I know. You'd take that bracelet off for that now, wouldn't you? <laughs> I'm 84 and I don't look like that. No, no. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. You know what? It's okay. We can't be too, you know, we, we've got this world where we're always in competition to look better, be better. We've been looking for the fountain of youth ever since Ponce de Leon found Florida. And guess what? It doesn't exist. We're going to age. We're going to decline. We're going to eventually pass. The difference between this and this 
is how much do we live in the between? Dang, I could only hope to have a body like that by the time I hit 84. I wish I had a body like that now. I truly do believe staying extremely active, even when your body hurts, can help you. Of course, you don't want to damage yourself in the process. Like if you have worn out knees, things like that, you need to get that taken care of if you can. But if you let pain and discomfort really hold you back to where you're like, oh, I'm just going to sit here because I don't want to hurt today, that's going to make it worse. And I think individuals like that, they work past that. They get whatever they need fixed if they're fortunate enough and able to do so. And they continuously work and work and work to maintain this healthy body. And to be 84 and look like that, that's really impressive to me. What do you guys think? I do not necessarily think you have to be in shape to live a long life, but if you want to be physically able when you're in your 80s, you definitely need to do something about that early on. Did you hear about that guy that was uh, working inside the government? You know, he's going to prison, I'm pretty sure, because he was accepting bribes. <gasps> he was making deals under the table. Yeah. And they even found in a search history, they took it before the court, and yes. it, he literally Googled how much is a, 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 gold, a, bar a, worth. a gold bar worth. <laughs> It was, yeah, it was. He was given, like, he was actually giving golden bars, millions not, of dollars. Oh. This is a huge deal. Yeah. There's a ton of things that he, like, wouldn't let happen or did let happen just because he was paid off. By Egypt, <laughs> and they even bought his wife a Mercedes. Yeah, it's, dude, it's bonkers, man. Crazy. Absolutely. If I wild. was doing sketchy stuff, I would never feel comfortable spending any of the money. I know, right? It's like yeah. you see my Jeep is suddenly lifted, like, 10 inches. You're like, uh, Andrew, where'd you get that money from? I, I feel like my brain, I would do, I would not want that money in my account. You yeah, could. So I'd move it. Yeah. I'd literally spend it as soon as I had it. Or just, yeah, don't put it into account. Just it's that story, we won't say names, but like that kid in high school that, um, you know, some of our people that we know went to school with recently and he uh he was been talking in high school about how he would like been stealing credit cards and stuff like oh, that yeah and buying stuff off of people's online Ooh. and everyone's like i'll tell you later yeah. I don't <laughs> everyone's like names. no you're not doing that you're not doing that i have a feeling a lot of people in the governmental agencies are taking a lot of bribes from different people of power from other countries from this country here in america like there's definitely bribes happening and that individual just is the unfortunate one that got caught <laughs> Oh, we're really weird looking under an MRI machine. That looks like an insect to me, and it kind of makes my eyeballs uncomfortable. You see how squishy those things were? Can we just talk about plastic surgery yeah, since we're on let's this? Talk. So I'm just going to go through all the things that I've done. Love. Because I feel like there's this stigma, and I'm not going to win. I'm going to do this. I'm not going to win. Okay. However, I'm hoping it sets some people free. Let's go. Okay. Here's things I haven't done that I have been accused of doing. Okay. And then I'll confirm the things I have done. Okay. I've never had a facelift of any kind. So no mid facelift, no like lateral brow lift, although I would like one okay. or no regular brow lift. Um, I've never done threads. I have researched them. That's not because of some moral thing. I just don't really believe they work. And I'm also afraid that they would interfere when I do need to have a facelift. Mm -hmm. But I am very tempted to go have my eyebrows snatched like all the way. I want I want that look sometimes. That seems fun. And you can do it on a lunch break. And I see why it's so tempting. And I I have researched it, have not done it yet. Okay. Um, I've never had this done. What is this? Oh, buck buckle fat? Buckle Bugle, fat? Buckle fat? Buckle fat? I'll never have any fat removed. I'm a very like lean person that doesn't have enough body fat mm -hmm. or fat in my face so I will only ever put fat in I will never be taking fat out okay. which leads me to I've never had any like liposuction or body contouring or anything like that okay. what are other things you can have butt implants I'd BBL. be so flattered if somebody thought I had a BBL <laughs> that uh, if, I, if I could I would I don't have the extra body fat I would get it done if I could <laughs> what I have had done like I said I had my boobs done when I was <laughs> 21 or 22 uh -huh. i had them redone after i was done breastfeeding my kids mm -hmm. because 
I don't know where they went, but they went. Then I had to have them redone very recently because the first set, I didn't have enough body fat to disguise. You could see the rippling of the implant. So I had to switch them out mm -hmm. to this set. I had my nose done mm -hmm. when I was in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. And that's something I've literally been accused of having like six, seven, eight rhinoplasty surgeries, which is impossible. Your nose would get necrosis and fall off. Right. I haven't had a rhinoplasty since I was... I'm going to say 23. It's been well over a decade. Okay. I haven't, I've not touched my nose since then. You've had your nose done. You've had your tits done and what? Botox and filler? That's yeah, that's it. Right. Oh, there's one thing I had done that I'm gatekeeping because <gasps> sorry. What? It was, it was really good. And it's not a known like plastic surgery. People don't even really know about it. You don't need it. I don't think. Really? You, you're not going to want it. I wanted it very badly and I needed to do it. And it's something that... Can you give us a hint? No. I've never really seen plastic surgery that looked good before. Every time I've ever seen plastic surgery, it always looks not good. I don't want to say plastic because it doesn't look plastic. I, in some cases, I wish it looked plastic. But most of the time, it's so deforming and it's so noticeable that it's just not not a good look to me. Now, I can understand for the people that need it because maybe they had scar damage, things like that, 100%. I'm not judging plastic surgery. I'm just saying for cosmetic purposes, it's really not that good of a look to me. What about you guys? Do you guys like the idea of having plastic surgery or do you guys have any actor or actress that you actually like that's had plastic surgery and you can give me a good reference to what good plastic surgery looks like? He said one of the main reasons Atlantis had to go down was because they were going against the laws of nature. They were experimenting by combining animals and human. Your legends of the half man, half animals, they don't come from Greece. They came from Atlantis. They were handed down into the Greek legends, but they started with Atlantis. The, you know, the centaurs, the half man, half horse, the half man, half uh, bull, all of these were experiments that the Atlanteans were doing. And a lot of it was done, they made servants out of them, slaves, and used them in different things like that. But they said they were disobeying the laws of nature. You are not supposed to fool around with things like that. It was one of the main reasons that Atlantis had to go down. They said, the one reason you have to know this is because your own civilization is doing the same thing. We're fast approaching that point where this cannot be allowed, the line has to be drawn. Some of you probably know about where they're introducing the human cells into the pigs so they can use the pig organs to transplant into the human body. Because the human body will reject something that is foreign, but it won't reject it if it has human uh, cells. And that was the logic behind the whole thing. But uh, there was one scientist who said, I don't think this is safe because, sure, you can eat pork, you can handle pigs, but what would happen if you put the organ in the human body and the blood was flowing through that constantly? He said, we could create a disease that there would be no cure for. And he said, you better take it slow here and really look at this. So they stopped the experimentation for a little while. But then they said, oh, I don't think it'll happen, so now they're doing it again. And they told me, you're going down the wrong way. You're headed down the same road of destruction that all the other ones have gone down. But in the case of Atlantis, a lot of it had to do with the crystals, too. They were using too much crystal power. They ended up making holes in the ozone layer that let the sun come through and was burning part. This is how some of the deserts were formed in the world. They were also uh, creating too much power that the, world, the Earth couldn't handle it. So they said this had to be stopped. It had gone too far. Oh, this is, this is the explanation for the Bermuda Triangle. That was part of the original Atlantis. And if you can picture this, on that point, there was a temple, and they did time travel and time experimentation, going back and forth. And there was a temple that used crystals that they could open and close portals so they could travel through time. But when the Atlantis went down, that temple was destroyed, and the machines there were partially destroyed. So they're still firing in an erratic fashion. This is why if a ship's or planes happened to be in the area and it would just shoot upward through the water, it causes them to be zapped into another portal into a different time. Now, does that make sense to you? Yeah. To me, I think it, it's the explanation of it. But they said every time through history, when the civilization would get to that point, we'd have to destroy it. And then we had to start all over again. They would leave a few survivors to begin again erase all the knowledge that they had. Now, some of them were not erased that went to Egypt, and they're the ones that built up the pyramids. 
but they had to start all over again from scratch. They said it was almost like they blew a fuse, and they couldn't allow the humans to continue that way. Let's just shut it down and start all over. But every time, look at the amount of time that had to be building up the civilization again and again and again. We are now approaching that point where we're at the same level. Psychic abilities are being brought back. Everything is happening. The mind is growing. We're learning more. We are reaching the point where we could be at the heights that these other civilizations were. They don't want to have to destroy it and start all over again. But if we were foolish enough to get to that point, they would have to do it. I'm a huge fan of the Bermuda Triangle and Atlantis theory. I really like that those two kind of work together with each other. If Atlantis really existed, if it did, and they were as technologically advanced as people say that they were, who's to say that the Bermuda Triangle does not have a piece of that technology in it? That's why it messes with aircraft tech and ships and things like that, because there is a piece of advanced technology somewhere in there that we just cannot handle because we do not have technology that one can seek it out and two that can handle its power. That's a pretty interesting theory to me. It's actually insane that nobody is talking about what this woman just said. Please listen carefully. As most of us know, tobacco use is the strongest risk factor for oral cancer. However, newer research, such as this study published in 2019, does show that there is a connection between nicotine usage and the promotion of cell growth that leads to oral cancer. As I said in the initial video about sin pouches, prolonged nicotine exposure does significantly increase your risk for oral cancer. So basically what she's saying is that while a lot of people think nicotine is only dangerous when it's paired with tobacco, that is not the case at all. And then she shows a study that shows that nicotine alone can increase your risk of getting oral cancer. So to anybody that's been taking Zins or any other nicotine pouches thinking that they're safe because they don't contain tobacco, just know that these can definitely cause damage. I am very wary about these type of things because I, I it just doesn't even look natural it looks very unnatural to me and it just that can't be good but i understand that there's a lot of people that utilize these it helps a lot of people it helps calm them down it just makes their life experience better and i'm all for you having the best experience you can but this definitely not for me they found a real dragon skeleton like Tim, I think like last week. <laughs> so dragons confirmed real. Like dragons straight up real. Look, where, where, where? Is. Let me see. I think it's in China, bro. But if you bag it, China's where they, they had a lot of dragons, right? Because in the mythology of China, everything is what? Dragons. Lucky dragon, red dragon. Wait, but if it's folklore and it's urban legend, wouldn't that be... Special? That means it's not. Oh. That means dragons are actually real. Yes. Look, look, look. This is a real 240 million year old fossil Holy shit. of a dragon. Straight up. They have dragons, bro. In and a wall? No, they found like the fossil. They found the oh, fossil that's of it. Mad. So they call it, they call it like the scientific name is the Dinophilus Rorus Oriental. Is. That's what it's called. So dragons were dinosaurs then? No. My theory was all the dinosaurs. I mean, they had wings. Yeah. But the, the wings is decomposed. So we can't tell they're dragons. Yeah. Because where the fuck? Hear me out. Where the fuck do we hear about dinosaurs in history? In like mythology? Mm -hmm. We always hear about dragons though. Yeah. Every single culture had something about dragons. Where's the dragons? I've heard of this fossil being discovered not long ago. And I do find this pretty interesting even though it's been classified as an aquatic creature, kind of like the Loch Ness Monster, it's not really a dragon from what people say. But it makes me wonder, in the Bible, dragons are referenced. Across all of the world, dragons really are referenced. There's no such things as dinosaurs. I think we just call dinosaurs dinosaurs now because we have more words for these types of creatures. But dinosaurs in the past could have been dragons because nobody knew what else to call these creatures. So they called them dragons. All of the dinosaur bones that we see in the world today are actually dragon bones in comparison to what people used to call those creatures in the past. But that would mean that these dinosaurs or dragon had to have been around in that time frame a few thousand years ago and not millions of years ago like people say. So it makes me wonder, were the dragons that people documented in the past dinosaurs and they just called them dragons because that's what we now know them as of dinosaurs? Or are they two different things altogether? Sorry, that was a bit of a ramble and it's kind of hard for me to explain what I really want to explain but hopefully you get what I'm saying. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here. I'm sorry about yesterday's video. I know there was no audio, no reaction. Something was happening with my audio. 
Everything looks like it's working now. I hope it is. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, if you are interested in any of these clips, links are down in the description below. And with that being said, have a good day.